Um, you know, I fear that the American dream, the America I grew up in, is, is vanishing before my eyes. And I'm not the only one that feels this way. Polls back this up. Yeah. Your, your book goes into this. You talk about Athens, Greece. You talk about Rome. You talk about falling empires. Right. What are you saying about America right now in its current state? Yeah, because I, I, I'm saying that you are the particular beneficiary of two centuries of a particular kind of inheritance that can be lost before you even know it. And people who think that the very unique peace and prosperity uh, that, that Americans have enjoyed in, in the last 50 or 60 years is a permanent condition of life is de uh, deluded. The downgrade is the beginning of it. The riots we see in London are the next stage in the process. Maybe and, 10 years down the road? Well, I think it'll be quicker than 10 years. I think, I think if we, we are going to be in really serious trouble if we do not rev roll back this government spending by mid-decade. When these guys come up with their plans for, you know, 2020, 2030, that's all ridiculous. Waste of time. It's, it, we need to act far before that. You talk about the Roman Empire and how they stopped inventing, stopped mm -hmm. creating, stopped growing. Yeah. And what you said, it, it's not that America no longer invents, but we're determined to disinvent everything our great-grandparents uh, created to enable the self-indulgent lives we take for granted. Right. That struck me. Yeah, because I think, you, you look at the light bulb. When Edison invented the light bulb, man conquered night. Man got to determine. There was no point staying up till two in the morning before you couldn't do anything. The light bulb conquered night. Uh, the internal combustion engine conquered distance. Now we think, well, what have we done lately? We get all excited because, you know, we've come up with a, uh, a, a smaller iPod for downloading Justin Bieber. It's not enough. It's not enough. So Americans are soft. We've gotten spoiled, self-indulgent. We've lost that hard work ethic. Um, I see it a lot. I see it a real lot. Nobody wants to work as hard as my, my parents and grandparents, you know, they didn't have any option. There no. was no safety net. They didn't have, you know, uh, you know, family money to fall back on. Well, and this idea that we, you know, we don't need to work in the fields 12 hours a day or, or whatever. I mean, I think that the problem with America and much of the Western world is that we've voted ourselves a lifestyle we're not willing to pay for. And so we're burdening our children and grandchildren. I wouldn't mind if somebody, if somebody says, I only want to work, uh, you know, 20 hours a week, that's fine. But to say, I want to work 20 hours a week and I want to, expense it, I want to bill it to my unborn grandchild, that's, that's actually wicked and immoral. And our government class are leading uh, in, the, in the campaign to beggar our kids and grandkids. You talk about a... If you look at the UK and the comments that are being made by people mm -hmm. uh, about the rich, class warfare, about taxes, all of this stuff, and if you look at Greece and Spain and Portugal and other parts of Europe, I say this is in part a result of failed liberal policies. In other words, a welfare state that has gotten out of control, promises that can't be fulfilled, and this is ultimately what happens. And I would argue that if America keeps on this path, we are, this violence we see on the screen, we're going to see here. Well, I, I think it's very possible we will see this kind of violence in the United States, so it'll be much worse, of course, because these people don't have weapons. Um, but th I think it's uh, a result of inequality, growing inequality between rich and poor. It's not about social welfare. It's about the fact that the UK and the United States both have the, uh, just this astronomical difference between the rich and the poor. And, and when you have that kind of a, a difference, this is the kind of stuff that you Right, can. and we should spread that wealth, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the, I, mean I, I, with respect to your opinion, I am just disgusted by this. Every time I see this video, every time I hear comments like that woman right there, I mean, have you seen the things that these rioters are asking for? They're asking the right for the right to housing. I mean, for gosh sake, they're asking for free education from the age of three on up. It's unreasonable. And the fact that they're acting the way they are without peaceful protests, they should be punished. This is, this is what I, you're making my case. This is now an entitlement mentality. Yes. And that is, we're going to give you health care, we're going to give you housing, we're going to give you training. 
transportation. People we're going to take care of food. Fifteen percent of Americans are on food stamps, Kirsten. We can't. We're going to be twenty-five trillion dollars in debt, and it's all because That's, we cannot fulfill these promises. This is coming to America. But it's not Absolutely. because people need an education. I mean, and that is one of the complaints is that they've raised the the cost of tuition in the UK, and it's it's too expensive for people. And so I think that I think people are entitled to an education. There's nothing oh, wrong with that. An education. And by the way, they're entitled to health care. They're entitled yes, to daycare. Also. They're entitled no, to what else? I wouldn't go all that way, but I would say I think Not there's something really disgusting in my There's something in this country for anybody that wants it. And the same thing right. with England. It, what's happened here is we have conditioned people to look to the government to be their answer for every problem they have and take zero responsibility. We are building an entitlement nation that by the day, because of our government and the administration in power right now, Sean, they are building the average American to be more dependent on them on a daily basis, whether it's finding a job, buying food, going to school, right. they are building us to be more dependent on the government than we ever have before. That's going to come to a head in a big way. On. Look, half the it country, is coming to a head. Half the country in America does not pay federal income taxes. Fully one half does not contribute a penny to federal income tax. But, in fact, hang on. And 15% of Americans are now on food stamps. That's nearly, that we're just shy of 50 million people. Yeah. So who are they going to elect? Are they going to elect people that say you've got to be more responsible for your own life or the caretakers that will give them what they want? And, or are and they going to...